Hello and welcome to another Inside Story where we just go behind the scenes and share, you, share things with you that you'll probably never hear. And today we have something really special. We've got the people who actually produce and edit and do all of the work on our Inside Stories and they are here to help uh, share with us what's involved and also their testimony. They got some awesome miracles that have happened. So this is Ron and Karen B. Wright. And welcome to our inside story. You're on the other side of the camera for a change. Yes. They're the ones that are behind the scenes. And you not only do all of the inside stories, but you also do, what is it? Impact interviews is what we call those. Yes. And how many of those have you done over the years? We have done over 1,600 impact interviews from your conferences, starting for me in Phoenix, 2014. That is amazing. And also, we need to share that this is our 100th Inside Story. So that's over eight years that we've been doing this. And for those of you that are watching, we've got all of these archived. You can go back and look at them. And I tell you, it just gives you a perspective on what God is doing through this ministry that you couldn't get any other way. We wouldn't share all of these things on my television program. So this is really awesome. So let me start with Karen. I have known Karen for... 40 years at least. Yes. Right? I remember when we all turned 30. So oh, man. <laughs> it's got to be at least 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's something yes. else. So Karen and her husband, uh, he was a pastor. They were pastors in Phoenix and I met them and we've had a long history. I've been over to their house and stuff and uh, Mike died. When was that that he died? In 2006. And uh, so tell them, uh, let's just start from there. How did you get from Arizona to here in Colorado? What happened? Well, uh, Mike and I always had a desire to come help you, but it never was the right time because we were pastoring. So the day he died, well, actually the day before, I said, I'm going. I am going. And so anyway, that day, um, we talked to, I talked to you and you invited, you said, well, I am not going to, you're not going to give up that dream you had of coming to help me. So five months later, I was on my way to Colorado. And how long had that been in your heart to come to Colorado and help us? We had written a letter back in December, and this was January then, that um, saying, we want to come help you, anything you have for us to do. We'll, we'll do anything. We just want to come by you, come alongside you and help you. So, but it had been in our heart for years to come help you. But I just got a confidence that I was going, that we were going. I didn't know it was just me that was going. And if I remember correctly, there were some of your friends that thought you were absolutely crazy to be leaving They thought Arizona. I'd kind of flipped out. And when... you lost some friends. I don't know if you <laughs> lost them, but they certainly were not in agreement with what you were doing. They weren't in agreement because, but because I knew it was in my heart, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. So I said, I'm going for what the Holy Spirit is saying. And so you came here basically having no experience in TV or any of these things, and you started working in our TV department. How, what did you do when you first came? My first job was working for Stephen Bransford. I was his admin, and one of the first things he had me do was sit in the studio when you were teaching and uh, take notes. And so I would take notes, and I would do some uh, I would tell you what day it was you were teaching and that type of thing. So that was my job. And so I was learning by leaps and bounds, just focusing on what you were saying. And it was a uh, really special time in my life. I was really just going to take a deep dive with the Holy Spirit and see what he had for me. So I would ask you questions in between your days of teaching. And it was awesome because uh, I put a focus there, and guess what happens when you put a focus on the Word of God and on the true meaning of what He's saying to you? And you know, this is in in interesting to me because you had known me for decades. Long, you had heard long. nearly all of my teachings, but there was a difference in just going to a meeting and hearing a teaching or listening to a 
a CD or something, and then just doing, like you said, a deep dive, and you really begin to change when you just saturated yourself with it. I think it was going from a head knowledge, you know, a mental ascent to this is what the Bible says, and yes, it's true, to a heart knowledge. And when it got in my heart, that's when I changed. And I wanted to find out why did my husband die? You know, that was one of the big things I wanted to find out. And what I kept getting a picture whenever I asked that question. And it was of Mike quoting scripture, which is a good thing. But I think he didn't understand hmm. that he already had it and he was trying to get it to happen. Well, we've got a big story right there, but I want to get on to about how you met Ron and now what you're doing. So we got a lot of ground to cover. So how long did you work in um, TV department before you met Ron? Let's see. We got married in 2013. 2013 so and you came here when? Well, 2006. You, our second June date was on Mike's seventh anniversary of his death. And I, I made sure, I said, is this all right for you that we can go out that night? And that's the night she presented me with this list of, you know, well, your, your well, business quiz <laughs> that, you had, that you would give somebody when they're employed. Before we get into all that, you got to tell people about how you met. This is just amazing to me. So how did God put all this together? I, well, let me tell go ahead. what happened to me. I got a prophetic word from somebody I didn't know at a party, okay? And the word was, the thing you have desired for a long time, which I had. I desired to have an awesome marriage again, like I had the first time. Mm -hmm. And so that was in my heart. And the word was, the thing you have desired for a long time, God says he hasn't forgotten you. And it's all about timing. On January 1st, um, my wife had died earlier in the year. On January 1st, the Lord told me, Ron, you, this is a new year. You have a new life. Now live it. I was on Christian Mingle, and I met this little lady called Swedish Last Two on Christian Mingle, this lady here. And we hooked up, and she sent me a spark, and I sent her back a smile. And then we decided to have a phone call. And we were going to call at uh, 8 o'clock on the 24th of January. And at 7.58, she called me. <sighs> Three hours and 18 minutes later, we hung up. Wow. And I think that's probably the strongest thing that's made this relationship incredible is communication. So we decided that if we're going to have a first date, let's just go to church. So we went to New Life. New Life. And if it was a good date, I'd get to come home and have an apple pie. And I had an apple pie. And <laughs> um, we had an incredible day. And then this lady sent me an email on Monday morning that says, you are the answer to my prayer. Now, I'm a guy, and when somebody gives you an email like that, you might go a little quicker than normal. Mm -hmm. So at about 10 days into this relationship, um, I asked her to marry me. But even earlier than that, I knew she was special. And I was on the side of my bed, literally praying on my knees. I said, Lord... Would you tell me if this is who you want me to have? Before I could get off that floor, she called and said, I want to tell you I loved you. And I'm going, I'm not asking any more questions. <laughs> you know, let me just say that this is just me. I'm not saying this is the way it's supposed to be. But meeting online to me would be like, that can't work. But then the speed that you're talking about this coming together, some people would say, I'm not sure that's God, but I have now observed you guys in marriage for how long have you been married? Eight, eight years. years. Eight Monday. years. And I tell you what, <laughs> these two are on a constant honeymoon. They are just having the time of their life. And uh, it made a believer out of me. God has really done some awesome, awesome things right here. Well, God's been part of it. I mean, that's what made this happen. It's... Um, Karen had her life, I had my life, and I think that's one of the things that's made this marriage so strong. We both had had marriages. Uh, Karen was married 33, I was married 44. So we have 80 years collectively of marriage. But we built the marriage on that bottom 50% and then made the agreement that the next 50% was our story. And that's why, what we've done in going forward. 
and to finish that one piece. When we went to Phoenix to the first GTC, we drove. It was a GTS then. I had a stack of CDs we were going to listen to. Going down and back, we never touched a CD. We talked the whole way down and the whole way back. Well, that's and, good. And this, it's been amazing. It really has. I'm, I know. So, Ron, you got introduced to me through Karen. So how, right. how did that happen? How did you respond when you started listening? Well, we came to Campus Days 2013 because we hadn't been married yet. And you made the invitation for um, baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm thinking, yeah. So I go, nudge. She didn't, didn't move. So when we got done, we went home and we spent over three hours. That seemed to be our magic number, <laughs> talking about what was meant by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we then got married, and we were over at Michael and Donna Leisner's house playing Mexican Train with Al and Debbie. Mm -hmm. And they pretty significantly beeped on me that day. But we got done. <laughs> Al, I asked Al to share his testimony. And we talked for about an hour, and that night, Al um, took, led me to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which gave a whole different relationship that Al and I had with each other. Yeah. So uh, since then, it's been, I could jump ahead a little, and I experimented. I'd never heard of healing. We're in Chicago, and this lady comes bopping in and out, and the Lord says, pray for her. Well, I'm not used to praying for people for number one, but I'm going, okay. So I said, I went over and talked to her. I said, do you have a problem? And she says, yeah, my hands are freezing. I said, can I pray for your hands? So I did. And on Friday afternoon, when we're in the ring, tap, tap, tap on the shoulder, here comes the lady. She says, you entered, prayed for me last night, didn't you? And I go, yes. She says, I want you to know I was so warm in there, I never had to come back out. Praise Will you pray for my eyes? And I'm going, okay, God, <laughs> we are going places I'm not ready to go yet. And so we prayed for her eyes. Saturday afternoon, tap, 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 tap. I want you to know I don't have to wear my glasses anymore. Praise the Lord. I never heard of healing like this. That's awesome. I've never heard of the it's baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's been quite a for you, hasn't it? And I've told you many times, you have rocked my life, that it's been <laughs> an incredible journey. So Karen's the one that kind of drew you into the ministry. And so Karen, you were already doing the uh, inside story, weren't you? Yes. And you had an editor. How, how did Ron become the editor? How did all this work out? Ron had, you know, been my cameraman for a long time, but he wanted to go to the next level and, and learn editing. So he couldn't figure out how he was going to do that. you would so, never done anything like that. Mm, had never no even background. Didn't even touch Premiere Pro. Wow. So he asked me, can I do one of your inside stories? And I said, well, I have an editor. Corey Young was my editor mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know, I, I said, yes, I'll let you have one inside story. And I'll give you one that's a couple months down the road so you have time to learn, you know. And, and what I didn't know was that just a few days later, Corey gave the news that he was going to another position in the ministry. Mm -hmm. That he was going to go into public relations. So um, what I saw was that the Holy Spirit had that and gave Ron an extra couple weeks of time to learn how to edit. And so, and he never stopped. So then Corey left and um, so you self-taught yourself how to edit and how to do all of the things that are involved. Yes, sir. That is amazing. That's got to be the Holy Ghost. So well, what do you go, say go, about... Go uh, back. Let's go back one step a little bit. Um, after we got married, Karen went to Atlanta. And that's first... I mean, here we've been married six weeks and she's traveling. I'm going, uh, not so much. <laughs> then she goes to Chicago, misplaces her cell phone, misses her flight. And I'm going, I'm going to come there. And I didn't. But when she got home... I said, you are not traveling alone anymore. So she says, well, I'm not going to quit what I'm doing. That's not what I said. So <laughs> I went into Stephen. And I said, Stephen, how about letting me be her cameraman? Now, mind you, my camera experience is equal to my Premier Pro experience. <laughs> Karen and Stephen said, let me think about it. As he walked out the door that night, he goes, you're on. So eight years, this minister's conference on Monday, I was handed a headset. We started working. Tuesday, they said, you're on, and 
I had five different cameras in the first five shoots. That's amazing. But now explain just real quickly that when you go with me to one of our conferences, you do these impact videos. What's involved in that? What do you do? What we do is uh, we have people come to Karen and schedule a time. And we tried scheduling both once and ended up with way too many interviews. But um, she talks to people, she interviews them, and I'm her cameraman. And they share what impact you have. Karis has healing journeys. I mean, if you remember Rex Henry in Orlando, we sent him over to you. We saw him again this year. It's amazing the network that we're building. So we interview people and we average anywhere from 12 to 42 interviews at Summer Family Bible 2015. And then when Karen uh, did her first interviews, they would do them all in one big time block. And I said, no, we can't do that. I want to know what you've done. So I would make each section, how they met Andrew, what he impact, uh, did you go to Karis, what's your favorite teaching? Always get good ones on favorite teaching. And then the other thing we added at the end was thank yous to you. We have over 500 thank yous to you. And I put them on an Excel spreadsheet, cataloged them, and we have over 11,000 lines on that spreadsheet. But I can tell you in less than 20 seconds how many God wants you wells you have. Now, I Downloading them takes a little longer, but I can tell you every single one we have. This is really significant to the people watching this because we've got all of this volume. You said 1,600 of these interviews, mm -hmm. but they're useless if we can't find the material and get to them. And so that so is that's really what important. happened when Ron, at first, he just came down to the ministry and started hanging out, you know. And he used to be a businessman making the big bucks traveling around. He didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And he came down and just hung out, and pretty soon we organized all those videos, and it was mostly him, but I told him that's a desire I have to be able to find these things. And so he, uh, we just, one night, everybody else went home, and we sat there and worked on the computer, and this is what we need to do, and that's when everyone was working right here or at, down you know, at Elkton. I would think so. that if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, I'd love to have your job, getting all of these testimonies, hearing the things and, and putting it together. And I've heard some of the people after these inside stories, they're blessed by their own inside story, the way that it's all put together. And you guys are really ministering to a lot we, of people. We take it as an opportunity to minister to people. You know, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit leads us to people. And usually it works like this. I'm standing somewhere or I'm walking. Somebody catches my eye. We smile at each other and they're the next person I'm interviewing. It's the Holy Spirit that brings us together. That's all. Awesome. And, uh, you know, it happened when we came here this, this week. And so we've got already three or four people lined up and we haven't even gotten to the conference which I tell starts. you, this is so awesome <laughs> that, you know, we don't just ask you to do something and you're doing what you're told, but the Holy Spirit is leading you. It's something you enjoy doing. You feel like it's a ministry to people and to see you doing this as a ministry, it's, it's just awesome. Well, if, let's, go ahead. If a person is, has said, you know, I'm healed, and then they tell us their story and we realize they're halfway there, you know, they haven't seen the whole manifestation. We'll take the time and pray with them because we know the Holy Spirit brought them to us. So we'll pray. And that happened with Yvonne Smith. You're going to be seeing her story pretty soon. But she came and she... Yeah, I don't know who that is. It's a lady from Texas, <laughs> from but Worth. she's got a healing journey and they're doing a story. And a lot of our healing journeys came out of your interviews at first. Yes. We see the potential and so then they go do a story on them. But yeah, all of these little parts work together to make something. Well, it's more than, it's, done, it's not a job. It left being a job a long time ago. It's, it's a, one, a privilege to work for you. But two, it's a network. And we even had an Easter at our house. We had 14 people over the house. We'd interviewed 13 of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't stop there. We just become, you can't be close friends to everybody you meet, but... If the Holy Spirit says, stay connected with these people, that's what we want to do. And You've made friends all over the world. All over. To expand on what Karen said, too, we pray for people. And we had a lady at uh, Healing Is Here who had narcolepsy. And we prayed for her. The next year, she came back with her husband, with her family, totally healed. Now you're getting 
not just, okay, we did a healing journey and they recommend coming, or a healing, excuse me, healing is here. You have an, a result and a finish. And I mean, if anything, the only difference in her was she now could eat and had gained a little weight, but her story was incredible. I mean, she'd fall asleep on command and now her whole life has changed and you get both sides. And my favorite little one is a young lady came to the business summit, her mom sent her. She had never heard of you. She came to business summit. She is now married to Josh Bartlett and is going to Japan. Her name is Emily. <laughs> yeah, I know Emily. I didn't know that. She had no idea who you He's were when she lady. came to that business summit. And I think that's what's so much fun about it. And you guys have taken these inside stories to another level because you not only just edit what is said right here, but you're bringing in all of this B-roll. You've gotten to where, like, if they talk about Karis, you'll put on information about Karis at the end. If, if uh, they have a healing journey, you'll put that on and give information. And you have just increased the quality of our inside story. Tell us a little bit about what's involved. How long does it take you to do an inside story, to edit it and get everything done? It's about 110 to 120 hours uh, a month to do that. But it, we've even had an exciting few, last few months in get, moving to Hawaii and buying a home there. We have still not missed a delivery date. In fact, we have three moves, and, and we now have a home that God has blessed us. Um, but it, I think the one thing that really got to me was I was watching, I was helping Karen when she was working with the Redditors. And I wanted to say, well, why don't we put one of these impact interviews in here? Because you preach, Creflo preaches, Dwayne preaches, they hear you. What we have is the fruit of what you're talking about. Yeah. And if you can take those and put those in a little segment at the end, it's yeah. not long, it's normally a minute to a minute and a half long, people say, this is what he did to my life. This is what you're doing. And in my thank yous, I have three guys as big as I am who cried during the thank you to you and said, basically, if you had not been there, they would not be alive today. Do we have those uh, in any format that people can access those, or is that just all internal for the ministry? There was that uh, thing we were doing, putting the reports online for a while. You did that for me, I know, and I saw those. But, well, here's another great thing. We, we need to get those out to people because those things were very, very encouraging. What, what happened to me personally was, you know, like I've said before, I had a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge, that we had authority. When I started, when I got that, you know, understanding, then I was able to to uh, see the results of that. You know, I was healed, I was transformed, all those things. So when we sit and listen to these interviews, we are totally being encouraged and changed by everything that is said, just like you love to hear, you know, the testimonies, because this is why you do what you do, because you want people's lives to be changed. Well, you do what you do because God called you to do it, and you're doing it by faith. But when you see the fruit, it really is encouraging. Not it only is. to me, I believe it's encouraging to the people who watch, and it encourages them that if God did this for somebody else, He can do it for them. So you guys, I need to let people know that typically you're dressed in your Hawaiian garb. <laughs> you, did you get married in Hawaii? No, you did we, your honeymoon. We were going to. We actually, we actually eloped <laughs> on Good Friday, which is the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. um, God but has I a sense of humor, and and he, he uh, made some arrangements for us. But on the Thursday before Good Friday, I said, "Well, why aren't we getting married?" He said, "I'd like to live in Elizabeth, and you know where that is." Uh -huh. And in between Colorado Springs, she yeah. said. Uh, um, I don't know. I said, then why don't we get married? So she came over Thursday night, and, and we, she got, well, we got up on Friday morning. I said, well, it's your call. What do you want to do? She says, let's get married. So we eloped. Then we went to Hawaii on June 15th, which was my mom's birthday, to do our honeymoon. Okay, so they went to Hawaii, did their honeymoon there, and they have been in love with Hawaii. They typically are dressed in exactly the same uh, outfits and everything is Hawaii. And I told them today, this is the first time I've seen you in years without all of your Hawaiian garb on. They love Hawaii and they move there. And because of the 
type of ministry that you have, edit, you can edit anywhere in the world. And so they live in Hawaii and are just, man, God's good, isn't he? We They're have our own ministry over there. It's called Be Right Aloha Ministries. And on the back of our card, it says, Doing any God story anywhere. Amen. So, so you do stories for other people. Yes. yes. So how would they get hold of that? Uh, you um, can, when you edit this program, you can put up the bandit. <laughs> There's one in particular. His name is Matt Higa. He's uh, the pastor for uh, New Hope. We interviewed him, and he told his story. And it is, it's only nine minutes long, and you know you're not going to get it all on the inside story. But he just tells the life he went through to the point that he had um, chicken pox so bad that they said he was either going to die, and the Lord got his attention. And, and if you see a story, and we can't, we will share that story. He decided to go dive in the ocean. The Lord told him to go in the ocean. And he, uh, all his scabs fell off. He was totally healed. Wow. And he is now a minister over there. And he's one of our, was our, one of our first interviews. The thing that happened to me was that Ron got a word from God saying, you know, we're supposed to go to Hawaii. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but I have to have my own word. And, <laughs> you know, I guess I've been single too long, yeah. seven years. And so what happened was one day uh, we got a call from Hawaii. We had only met this person once. And so it was Lon Malapit, and he said, do you still have a heart for Hawaii? And we said, yes. And he said, would you like to interview some Christian leaders over here? We're going to be celebrating 200 years of the missionaries coming. Mm -hmm. So um, I saw that the Holy Spirit met my need for that confirmation of what uh, we're supposed to do next. And I said, but I'm not disconnecting from <laughs> the ministry I no, love. I'm so. glad you didn't. And, and we she just didn't get won't. a word. She got a book <laughs> because it's been nonstop. But things like that have just been happening all the time. It's just, it's so much easier to live a life where you just listen to the Holy Spirit, and then you do what He says. Well, you Pretty know, simple. your testimony is good on so many levels. Both of you lost your mate, and you could have just been spending the rest of your life alone and stuff, and yet both of you, God spoke to you, told you to go on with your life, and then God put you together, and not only are you happily married and having a constant honeymoon in Hawaii, but now you found a ministry you are touching people. You just minister to people on so many levels. Your testimony you is awesome. You do not want to get on the airplane next to her. She will interview you before you get off the airplane. <laughs> but As she, the Holy Spirit But leads. she has such a tremendous touch. When, when she interviews somebody, she'll get people to tell them things. Uh, there's going to be a young lady you're going to meet fairly soon. Her name is Casey Blaney. She was in Phoenix. We did a 26-minute impact interview with her. Um, but when people talk to Karen, they just open up their heart. And it's not sitting in front of the camera. It's having a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. And they open up her heart. She makes them feel like they're sharing what's going on in their life. And often Karen will share what's going on in hers. And I would say probably half the people we interview, we pray for when we're done. It's really fun. Well, let me just say thank you for everything you do because you help me uh, tell these stories. Uh, there's so many stories I wouldn't even know about if it wasn't for you, and you help me present these to other people. All of, I couldn't tell you how many people have seen one of the healing journeys and stuff, and they get inspired by that, and because of that, they get healed. I know people are inspired by what you do. And also for the people who are watching, I want to say thank you from them to you because we wouldn't be making the impact we are without you. So I appreciate you all so much. In Orlando, and I don't know if you remember the young man, he came in on Thursday night, could hardly walk, had the cowboy hat on. He had just been diagnosed with ALS and couldn't talk. We interviewed him on Saturday afternoon. He walked over to us. And he gave an interview that you have no idea that he had any problem speaking. Wow. An hour later, we see him over on the floor praying for somebody else. 
That's awesome. That's what this is so about. So we're anxious to uh, for next year to come so we can talk to him again and, you know, confirm that healing because... Well, we're out of time. I tell you what, we're just getting started. There's so <laughs> much more I'd like to have said, but you guys are a blessing. Thank you so much for everything you do. I really, really appreciate you. And thank you for watching this. And I want to just encourage you that, you know, Ron and Karen are people just like all the rest of us, and they've had things happen in their life, and yet they just held on to God, kept believing God, and now they are living a dream that I think both of them are probably in one of the best spots you've ever been in your life. And they're, they're being used by God to touch other people. And the same thing will work for every single one of you. So I hope that this encourages you. And when you see these inside stories, praise God, this is our 100th uh, episode of the inside story. When you see this, this is the couple right here that makes all that happen. So thanks to you. Thank to you for watching and being a part of this. And God bless you. We'll see you again next month for another inside story. In this edition of Inside Story, you met the producer and editor of the inside stories, Karen and Ron B. Wright. When God brought these two widowed individuals together in an awesome marriage, He birthed a new ministry team. Their ministry together began with conducting video impact interviews at Andrews conferences around the United States. The desire to learn new skills in editing and a passion for telling God stories then led Karen and Ron to produce and edit the Inside Story together. In commemoration of the 100th edition of Inside Story, Let's see how it started over eight years ago. Welcome to our very first edition of the Inside Story. I tell you, I am really, really excited about this. This is something that uh, I specifically wanted to do because the Lord is doing so much here at Andrew Womack Ministries that most of the people never hear about it. And so I sat down with my staff and talked about some things and just decided that we needed to start doing something to show what's going on behind the scenes and uh, just to inform people because God's doing some awesome things that we just don't really give Him credit for. And so this is really important to me. We close this 100th edition of Inside Story by inviting you to experience the excitement of special Inside Stories, such as Episode 48, The Sturman Property Purchase, which has become the headquarters building for Andrew Womack Ministries. Episode 62, Andrew Womack's 50th Anniversary Show. We just celebrated our 50th year anniversary, and unbeknownst to me, I knew that they were going to do something. John worked on this for eight months, 50, 60 hours a week, and we're going to share with you how this all came to pass and, and how we put it together, because I believe it's a great testimony that it takes a lot of different talents and people and abilities to make the ministry work. And what you saw, our 50th anniversary, which not only blessed me, but I believe it glorified the Lord and showed how faithful He was. It couldn't have happened without Stephen and the entire department, but specifically John. Karen and Ron would like to thank Andrew Womack and Stephen Bransford for the opportunity to do impact interviews as well as edit and produce Inside Stories. You won't want to miss our November edition on Jacob and Linda Olofsson. Find out what happened when God called one family from Sweden to go places they had never been and do things they had never done and ended up at Karis Bible College. You cannot manufacture a calling from God, but you must discover your calling. In December, Carrie interviews Rich Price and Mike Nelson. Expand your thinking and discover another way of giving through non-cash donations. See you next time.